Hey everybody, wanted to make a quick video for you to talk about an assignment that's going to be coming into the lab, um, really starting anytime. I know Friday we have some folks coming in, maybe before, um, but this is uh, from a story making class. Uh, the professor is uh, Andrea Niles. So uh, the basic assignment, and I'll show you what I have on it here, is that the students are going to tell a story, imagine that in storytelling class, or story making class. Um, so they're going to give us a story either about option one, an experience, event, memory, vacation, or something that happened to them, or option two, tell a story based on an insper based on the inspiration of a photograph of their choice. Now, regardless of what they choose, there are elements that need to be included, and you see those here. So they really need a strong attention getter to start things out. Um, she is looking for character development so that we don't just have you know names and faces, but we know a little bit about the backstory. Uh, the setting needs to be clear where this takes place. It doesn't have to be necessarily real. So, for example, you know they could say that they are you know um, in Narnia. I don't know, but you know it doesn't have to be real, but it needs to be specific. Then the climax or conflict and resolution. So again, what's the big issue that's going on? And then how does that get resolved? Think of your favorite movie, really. Um, there's always conflict and resolution. Uh, the conclusion should be used to tie it together. So again, what we do, right, with the attention getter and the closure, they could come back and connect those two. Now, the rest of this is a lot of times for delivery. So here it says... Vivid imagery, emotion, sensory imagery throughout the story. Now, don't worry too much about the specific words, but the idea there is that it needs to be a sincere, dramatic delivery. So, you know, they don't need to go melodramatic and over the top, but they should be, you know, delivering it in a convincing way as if they are an actual storyteller. Um, I'll also put a link in this video to a storyteller. I know we've all told stories and heard stories, but there are professional storytellers and I think that's closer to what she's looking for. Uh, next up, consistent point of view throughout the story. So, you know, don't change between I and, you know, um, they and sort of, you know, are you the narrator? Are you speaking as a character? Where is that coming from? It really doesn't matter to her as long as it's consistent. Uh, we need dialogue between characters. So conversations happening basic storytelling and public speaking skills. So, you know, just the key things and then a maximum of or minimum of four, maximum of five minutes. So they've got a, a minute to work with. Uh, they've got some notes on here about uh, details of the assignment. The one that is most important for us, I think, is that they can, but don't have to use one visual image on a PowerPoint, but they can't do multiple slides. They can't do a video. So if they want to, you know, put up a picture of, uh, I don't know, maybe they're doing a Batman story and they put up a big Batman symbol or Gotham City or whatever. It doesn't matter. Again, it can be whatever they want it to be as long as it fits with the story they're telling. But a big takeaway there is they can't have more than a single slide. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's the main things. They have to come to the speech lab. That is a requirement. So they will be here, at least most of them. The other form I want to show you from that class is this one. This is what she will be using when she grades them, and she, they should have this, but um, 20 points possible for the content, as you see it up here, and then she has 10 points possible for delivery, and so you see those there. Looks a lot like my evaluation form. wonder where she got that, um, and then these ideas up here. So, you know, if they want to practice, maybe the client comes in and they've already written their story they want to practice great um, pull up this form ask them for it either way I'll put it on this post um, and give them your feedback based on what she'll be looking for if they've not yet started maybe they um, you know, aren't at that point where they're ready to practice then go back to this and make sure that you're using this as a check sheet to make sure they've got what they need very last thing I want to show you is that I went to um, this class and did a workshop one night for them and basically I told them to think about movies even great ones like this Sharknado 3 um, to think about how movies are told because that is what we associate with storytelling mostly now movies and, and books so 
Um, the key things that you should take away from this is that they may be dealing with anxiety. So if that is the case, you can give them feedback on that. By the way, be on the lookout for new anxiety. Um, I want to call it like posters, but you know, things on the wall that will help you help clients who are dealing with nerves. Um, don't forget to normalize anxiety. It's very common. They need to know that. Uh, you can tell them ways to get through it. And then what you'll need to know, or at least these terms, I think we all know them, but just in the context of how I explained it to them, we went over these terms here. And so for the plot, just focus on the events, the sequence that they they happen in, and, and if they're followable or not. Characters, again, they need names, backgrounds. We need to know about their type of person, their style, personality, what motivates them. The theme of the movie or the big takeaway, uh, is it redemption like Django? Is it coming of age like American Pie? Is it some good versus evil story or revenge or is it romance or what, what is it? You know, boy gets girl, girl gets boy, girl gets girl, boy gets boy. I don't know. Setting. Um, here, this is important. Again, you need to be specific, but it doesn't have to be, again, real. Um, it could be, as you see there, unnamed but described. That's, I would recommend that they name it. Um, so again, it doesn't have to be real, but it should be specific. There will be conflict. Maybe that's based on uh, some ex external sort of opposition of forces. Maybe it's their philosophies, goals, motivations, um, things keeping them from achieving what they want. So if you look at the examples here, the classic one is Romeo and Juliet. The conflict, of course, is clear. Um, and then you, know, you can think of your favorite movie there. The climax, again, is sort of when that conflict comes to a head. So, you know, it's Luke getting his hand cut off. It's the shower scene in Psycho. But it's the highest level of tension uh, in the, the story. And then the resolution, of course, is the coming down from that. Once things have been resolved, what does that look like? All right, so that's what I wanted to share with you. Just know that that is coming up. These folks will be coming in. Um, again, I'm not really worried about it. I think you're going to be fine with it. Uh, but if you do happen to have any questions about this, as always, let me know, and I'm happy to uh, clear it up for you. And if not, we'll email uh, Andrea Niles and ask her. Have a good one.